Hey y'all, thanks for joining me for a craft night with friends. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make cute embroidery kits for beginners. And I'm here every weeknight, Monday through Friday at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. It's a time that we can relax and craft together. So we are working on the quail embroidery design. Uh, we are working through the uh, whole alphabet of animals here. And uh, we're pretty far. We're going to finish his little top knot tonight. And I think we'll get going on the letters as well. So, all right, let's get going. All right. Hello, everyone. Thanks again for joining. All right. So here is our little dude from yesterday. We are doing a padded, um, a padded satin stitch. So we already did that for his markings here. So it is a bit taller and a bit rounder. We're just giving it a try. And what we did is put a bunch of little seed stitches underneath. And now we're doing the satin stitch on top. So in the top knot here, we're doing it, um, the satin stitch or the um, padded bit just on the big round part. And then we're not gonna have it padded for the rest. And we'll just kind of see if we can tell a difference really. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so we did the seed stitches yesterday. Then we have the cues down here and we could get started on those tonight as well. I don't know how I want to stitch those yet. So if there's any ideas out there, let me know. But let's get going with, I kind of like going vertical. Let's get going with the satin stitch first. I'm going to cross all the way over to the other side now, but I want to still like flip the thread a little bit. So I think we'll go like right. There. I don't know, I may not have done this very well. Let's let's see how my aim was there. All right, that's not bad. All right, so I am going to just uh, go from here to the top. I don't think I need any uh, um, any guidelines. A lot of times I'll put like a few more little uh, lines along the way so that are parallel to the first line, so I can. Uh, hopefully not veer off like if the if it's too big and I and I don't catch that I was getting a little off I have that next guideline to kind of bring me back but I think I think we can do it in the amount of space we got here without without angling it too much so we're like quite along on uh, this project already which is crazy like we're already Already on the queue. Uh, I have the, here's our little uh, layout for the quilt. So we're on the queue. So, and we'll be doing the R next week, which is the raccoon. That's uh, this little dude here. Um, so we'll have enough to create a whole nother row here. So geez, we only have uh, the eight left. Um, to do yet. So we do like two a month. So one, two, three, four, about four months. It might get like squiggly in De December, but let's just say, okay, November, December, January, February. So theoretically by the end of February, we could have everything stitched. Um, I'm going to just say, let's, let's assume maybe March <laughs> we'll have everything stitched. Uh, February, March, and then we will be, um, we're quilting it still, but we're doing that quilt as you go process. So that all is going to go a lot faster. So I still think March, April, May, June, I still think probably like early summer <laughs> to be done with this quilt. So it's, it's, it's a hefty project still. I think early summer at the latest though, I think we're going at a pretty good clip of getting the um, quilt together. Like we were almost, uh, we're quilted um, up through the letter N. And we have the first few, we have like the first and second row um, almost done uh, um, assembling, assembling those blocks too. So we already have like a partial quilt uh, going. So I think it's, I think it's like, you know, I don't want to jinx us, but like, I think early summer at the latest, like I think we can still get this done in spring, spring yet. So that'd be kind of nice. We started, what? I think we started in February of this year. 
so it'll be a little over a year project which for us here making quilts is not that bad <laughs> we got other quilts that have been going on for way more years than that that still aren't done so i gotta i want to get going on those too i feel like since i've started these lives like a zillion years ago it's just been like oh man i want to just let's just finish that project and get it out of the way it's like that just keeps happening <laughs> i guess we keep starting starting projects which is fine too so, all right there's that top part i think i have a little bit of floss left i'm going to jump down and we'll start getting this little edge um of the top knot and we'll just see if we can tell a difference between the padded and the not padded side i have another set of two strands left with um this when we cut the six when we cut the last piece of black floss oh i think i got a little knot there Oops, through. okay we're good and here again i could put little like guideposts along the way so my stitches stay straight but i think i'm doing an okay job and when it's thinner like this i think it's a little easier to do oops and i think i just pulled the right out of my needle oh no not quite there we go my back finger got stuck in the loop so i hope everyone had a lovely day today actually just i um you know, just planning on getting all this stuff done today, of course. And then I, I literally had to go take a huge nap today. I think, um, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just still tired and I don't know. We did a lot of work outside this weekend and stuff too. And I think that just kind of caught up on me. But now I'm wide awake again and <laughs> ready to go. Uh, so I'm probably going to get some stuff done uh, when we're done here. We're actually getting a lot farther on um, this little plume than I thought we would with the remainder of the thread here. I guess it's just because, you know, it's not like huge stitches. It's, it's uh, just these little itty bitty this thin line here. Alright. Gonna take a while to it's gonna take a while to get all the way down this edge yet. So what should we do for the letters though? I kinda wanted to do something that we could just like speed through real quick um you know so not satin stitch because uh, originally it was you know satin stitched uh filled in too but if we get them done sooner then we have all of tomorrow and friday to we talked about maybe putting like little um little baby quail or like maybe maybe we'll just do one baby quail we could do like one little baby behind uh, um behind this quail which would be kind of cute so that would give us enough time to like draw it out and uh, draw it onto our design here and, and and stitch it up too with his little top knot and stuff. So um, ideally we do something to finish these letter cues pretty quickly. Mm, I think I kind of missed a stitch in there. Let's do that. And then I think I got to weave this in. We'll start a fresh fresh piece of floss here just to finish that up so all right let's let's weave it in three oh that's kind of loose i think we'll be fine So even though we are pretty far on this project, there's still plenty of time to come stitch with us and make your own quilt and everything. Cause like I said, we'll still be going at least till um, I'm thinking 
late spring, early, early summer. <laughs> so plenty of time. Uh, Catherine's saying maybe backstitch with seed. Oh yeah, so we could, oh, that'd be kind of cute. So we could just kind of, so it would kind of look like this almost, um, this little area. So we could like, yeah, outline it in backstitch and then do like a quick fill with, with seed stitches. I kind of like that. And the seed stitches could go around in a circle. Like we could get some direction with the seed stitches, like the, this cross in the queue could just be like all in that direction and then the rest could curve around. That'd be kind of cute. All right, I kind of like that idea. And then it'd go with this too. And it'd, it'd go a whole lot faster than piles of satin stitch, which, you know, I'm already doing piles of satin stitch with this guy. I don't know if I want to do more. <laughs> so I think that's what, let's just go with that. I like that idea. Quick back stitch. I mean, the back stitch might still take some time, but. Ooh, this is really twisty. So I'm going to actually do that thing. I don't think these have been separated. I'm going to separate them and put them back together because that'll get rid of that twist of them being, you know, together. And uh, um, it'll be easier to do that split in the middle so all the threads lay nice and flat. Railroading. There, see? Uh, they're not twisted at all anymore. Hey, Cassie. Ooh, you guys, thanks for the follows. Thanks for the hearts, I appreciate it. You guys are great. All right, yeah, so we'll just finish this guy up as quick as we can, which, you know, is not quick. And uh, yeah, then we'll get going on the back stitch. I'll do the back stitch first and then, then the seed stitch after, I think, for the letter. The cues. I've seen okay. I've seen a. Let me know how how you guys do this. But uh, if you've ever done, oh Cassie, that's awesome. Cassie said I started on my bouquet of Frankenstein's mystery gift tonight. Yay! Oh, that's fun. Yeah, on the the washable, on the stick and stitch that washable fusible. Or not feasible, the washable, um, inner, ah, what the heck, St stabilizer, that's the word. That's awesome, I like that one, all the little roses. Um, oh, I forgot what I was saying, but that's fine. Oh, yeah, I've seen a few people online, um, where they did a design that was, like an outline and then filled with um, like short and long stitch. So like they're basically taking something like this and filling it completely in. So let's just imagine we did that. So an outline, like let's, this bird is outlined and then we filled in the whole thing uh, with stitches, like what we're doing here, basically. Um, I've seen a couple people lately do the actual back stitch, the outline first, and then they filled it in after doing that that outline and in my in my head i'm like oh i would kind of do the like fill it in first and then do the outline after because then i feel like maybe the outline would be a little bit cleaner because you wouldn't accidentally like catch the outline as you go let me know what you guys think about that i mean what it did do when i was watching them stitches like you had these nice bold outlines that you could just stay in I suppose as you stitched but I don't know it was a different way yeah, I saw more than one person do this so it was a different way of thinking about it and I hadn't thought about it that way before so I don't know might be worth a try sometime just to see which way I like better This does take a little bit longer doing all this, the railroading where I split the two strands. Um, so there's one on either side, but it does, it has been um, getting the stitches to like lay really nice and flat next to each other, which is cool. I suppose it's kind of hard to tell anyway with this black. Black isn't like reflecting much light, like how the, the white, I mean, there's clear shine to this white. Like you can see, you can see the light and then you can see the dark shadow underneath. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not real, really getting that too much with this black. It just, uh, 
doesn't reflect light in the same way. So it might be a little bit harder to tell if it's raised or not than, than the white. So that's kind of, I don't know, maybe we should have tried another color. But the black is, you know, how it is on the quail and we're kind of going with the realistic colors for the rest of it. So I, I'm still happy with the black. But dang, all these tiny stitches. Ugh. Let's get this guy done. Bloom the top knot. Excited now for the letters. What to pick colors? I think we can play with color a little bit more. I don't think we have to use any of those colors, I don't think. It'd be fun to just throw in a bit of color. Maybe some green. Like green would be kind of pretty here, because like, you know, it'd almost be like he's walking on grass or something. We'll to, although I think we ran out of one of the greens, we'll have to see what I have. I'm just looking. I think I have the dark green and the, the lightest green that's almost like a um like a the celery green. Uh we could do the dark green for the outline and the celery green for the seed stitches. I kinda like that idea. Maybe do that. I have I have some of those on the spool yet. So we got that guy and and this. Uh, we did we did run out of the lime. That's our third green, which I really like. I like that lime color, but we did run out of that. So yeah, maybe we do these. We'll do the green, dark green, which is the fresh basil color. We'll do that for the outlines, and then we'll add some seed stitches uh, on the inside with that green. I think that's pretty. That'll be like a nice, like he's walking walking through the field, walking through the grass in someone's backyard. Out in Cali, that's what, that's what this guy's gonna do. I like it. We're getting there. I'm gonna have to Google more about these plumes. Um, someone mentioned that they're actually like six feathers put together that look like, like just the one plume. I'm curious like what that looks like up close. Ooh, my thread flipped a little bit too. A little just a little harder to and it's actually just kind of hard to see because it's so black. Come on, guy. Hey, Wanda. Thanks for hopping on to YouTube. Oh, uh, Cassie says, yes, I thought the, the um, chicken stitch was an iron on. Yeah, oh, I'm glad you asked. Yep, so that that was one of the, that chicken stitch that you can stitch through. Um, our embroidery, the month uh, before we did the, these new kits, had, had that in, I think. I think I missed one up in here. I might jump up because it looks kind of funny right around the head there. I might need to add, add another stitch, but I'm gonna just finish these guys down here quick. Getting real picky if I'm thinking about going back, but I'm gonna do it. Yeah, just jump up right there, I think. It's just a teensy bit better. Okay, that's pretty cute. I'm trying to see from the side if you can tell. I mean, you can like, you know, very subtly tell that it is it is poofed up, um, poofed up 
uh, a little bit more than um, the other bit. So like I said, if it, if it was a different color, I think you'd see the light and shadow a little bit more, like how you can down here. Uh, I think it's kind of fun. A little padded, padded um, satin stitch. So let's weave in the end. I'm going to weave it into here. It's going to be easier. And let's get going on the letters. So this little dude's done, though. And we'll have to, um, we'll have to make his little baby to walk behind him. I think maybe, let's just do one. That's probably more reasonable. Uh, but we'll, we'll, like, draw that out tomorrow. I'll get some paper and we can decide what he looks like. Maybe he's hopping along or smiling or something. A little baby. Here, I'm going to move my uh, needle minder up top here, just so he's a little bit more out of the way. And all right, we are doing, for the letters, we are doing an outline in the dark green for both. And then we are going to put little seed stitches, like his belly, um, on the inside of, of those, um, of the letters. So I think that's going to be kind of fun. I like the greens. I, I think it feels grassy. I like it. Oh, I suppose I could see if I have any scraps, though. Doesn't look like it. I don't think I've... Oh, I have some of the celery colored scraps. Oh, uh, but that's just two strands. So I must have been I must have been doing some satin stitch with it. Oh, or I'm actually taking apart three strands. Hold on. And that's pretty short though. What else do we got? I think we might have enough celery dough in here. There we go. That's a good piece. Ooh, it'd be nice to not have to take any off. This is the lime, so I'm not gonna deal with that. All right, well, these scraps might get us uh, get us pretty far. I'm happy about that. And there's none of the dark green. So I'm just going to put those to the side for now while we work on the dark green. So we'll get a fresh piece for this. There, about that much. Actually, how much is left in here? Let's just take the whole thing off, I think. Oh, actually, that's a lot more than I. I'm going to take it off and then just let's see what happens if I split. Yeah. Well, that's about 18 inches. Should I just do that? I'm gonna just try and stitch with all of this. This is a this is a lot longer than I normally use, but I'm doing it. Let's see if it, it might be a little harder to pull these strands out. So this is it. This is it for this dark green. I should see. Oh yeah, I do have I have my little um <laughs> cup. Oh, one's right on top. So I have this little cup of just floss that I have like sitting around. So I'm just gonna put um, a green, the fresh base. I'm just gonna put it on my tray. That's like a reminder that that one's out. Um, so I'll throw that back up. Good. Now I don't have to run, um, run and get a stain from downstairs. I had one right here. Let's see. There we go. Two and three. Oh, the Catholics is from the side. It looks like a little flat caterpillar. <laughs> Fun. Little fuzzy bear. Maybe I can get all the outlines with this one. Ooh, this is a longer piece. And do that, and let's make it shorter by pulling the end a little shorter. All right, I think we're good there. Um, I think let's just do where I let that one little end hang out. I, I've been like kind of like liking um stitching like that lately, so we'll just let it be down here. I'm gonna leave this little end out um, enough to do like one more stitch plus weave in the end. So let's go about right there and I'll just hold it down. It's not even though I should trim it, but like right like that. And let's just do the back stitch. My finger's stuck. We'll just do the back stitch and let that hang out there and we'll come back and finish it. Uh, there's no, like I don't want to tie a knot on the back. That's why I'm doing it this way. Um, I don't like when my thread catches on the knots and, and all that. And uh, we'll also, uh, it also like it doesn't pull the little fuzzy end out from the end of the knot. All right, 
is the food. We are having our live special again, which is a uh, free mystery gift when you order $20 or more in the shop at penguinandfish.com. Uh, so, uh, and those will all go out tomorrow. Tomorrow's mail. So if there's something you've been looking at or wanted to maybe grab the embroidery of the month this month, uh, which is the cute little granny square. I'm excited to stitch this one up. It's so colorful and pretty. Uh, but yeah, so this is our embroidery of the month. We'll be stitching it up, um, not next week, but the week after. So if you want a little mystery gift on top of that, then uh, order through the live. And I just, you don't have to put a mystery gift in your cart or anything. We just look at the timestamp of when people ordered. So during the live or about like 15 minutes or so after. So thanks, thanks everyone for that. Oh, sound is good today. Okay, Linda, um, let me know how everyone else um, about the sound. Cause I know we had that little discussion um, before going off live last night about sound. I did, I did do a couple little tweaks. I did, uh, so, if I get really loud or excited, <laughs> uh, it doesn't cut out to, like, a higher decibel. Um, like, I don't want it to, like, blast your, your like, speakers, you know, like, sometimes when a speaker will crackle because it's so loud all of a sudden. Um, so I have, like, a, a limiter on that, so I turn that, I turn that a little bit down so it wasn't limiting as much because <laughs> i think that's like what was cutting out a little bit and i also uh at the bottom i'm able to raise what the i you know if this is uninteresting let me know but like <laughs> i just had to learn a whole pile about sound and microphones uh, a couple weekends ago so i'm interested but um at the bottom of the sound decibels like it was picking up, I think you guys could hear the rain and uh, like when an airplane flies over or like my refrigerator or like the laundry in the basement. I think you guys could hear all of that before. Um, so now I can set it. So all those low things, um, it won't pick up. And I think I had that set too high. So if I got quiet, then it kind of cut off a little bit. So I, I, I made it, uh, I made that less sensitive to so oh, good. I'm glad it's sounding better. I'm hoping, I'm hoping that did the trick. Now I got myself one of these little loopy doop knots. There we go. Got rid of him. Good peeps on YouTube. Um, say it sounds good. So awesome. That's great. Thanks. Thanks for uh, letting me know. All right, and when I get to the bottom here, I think I'm gonna just jump right up to the neck, to, to the inside. Again, usually maybe I wouldn't have done that jump just cause you can, you'll be able to see it, but I'm gonna be filling, filling that space with a bunch of uh, seed stitches. So I think that'll cover up, oh man, another little knot, cover up the little visibility of that jump. So I'm not gonna worry about it. We're gonna just let this guy hang out a little bit more until, well, I either run out of floss or um, need to jump over to that other view, which I think will happen first. So I, I'll start this guy fresh, though. I won't jump over to him because you'll definitely see that leap. All right, I think two more stitches and then the one that will, the stitch that will just leave for, for this. So yeah, this will be my last stitch here. And then I'm going to hop up. And we'll go around this thing or bit. I think this green is really pretty though on this. I like this little skew.
I, I'm thinking I won't have enough of this green to get around um, the other hue, but I do have that other piece of this. So that's good, and we'll still have a lot in the scraps too. So I think I think it'll still last a little bit, even though we're off the spool now. Really, um, after the raccoon, we only have. Okay, so let's say let's include the raccoon. So the raccoon, what did I say? Eight before two, four, six, eight, nine. So with the raccoon, which is next week's, we have nine. Nine to make still. So I'm I'm wondering, man, it'd be cool to see if we can make it through just using our um remaining skeins here but we're getting pretty limited on colors so i don't know all the remaining ones are gonna be like you know brown and we got a bunch of the gray and this tan <laughs> so not much of like these fun bright colors anymore so we'll have to we'll have to see how that that goes we might still have to break open another color but theoretically there'd be enough loss like literal floss to finish up those nine, I think. The trick is like, do we like any of the colors? <laughs> so that'll be that'll be kind of fun to see for the rest of this project. I'm totally willing to open up or like to to start a new color. That's totally fine too. But it's just kind of a fun little thing. Like, yeah, maybe there is something in here that looks cute that we can still use. It'll be fun to see. All right, let's weave in that end. Oh, it's so pretty in the back. We should do like a stem stitch for this outline sometime. Stem. Like because the back stitch looks like a stem stitch, especially around these curves on the back. All right, I'm gonna be real, real lazy right here. I, I'm, I'm gonna just like let this dangle here still. I don't want to take my thread off of uh, the needle and uh, um, go back to finish this. So I'm gonna just let that be and keep going. And then when I, when this needle is free, when I run out of floss or or um, finish the queue, then I'll, then I'll go back over there. Let's start right here. I'm gonna do the same thing. Let's let a little bit dangle out. That'll be like the last stitch and weaving in the end. Oops. Shorter. Nine oh five. We might still have time to finish this. That'd be great because I I do want to. Uh, get some paper and a pencil out for tomorrow, and uh, we'll see. We'll um, see if we can draw a little dude, a little friend for him. Hmm, I was also just thinking. <laughs> <laughs> that when we were testing sound, like when John and I was were testing sound, I was always looking forward, uh, which makes my mouth closer to the microphone. And uh, I'm realizing right now, like, oh, I'm kind of looking down constantly <laughs> uh, when we're on the lives here because I'm, you know, we're stitching and that sort of thing. So I should check the sound for uh, when I look down. But it sounds like you guys are. Thing. It's good now, so that's good. I did turn it a little higher yesterday, too, I think. Anywho, working through it. Little stitches I put. I'm thinking it's gonna be a definite L for um, <laughs> thread chicken, but um, we'll just get a new, we'll get a new, our 
last little piece of green out and finish it up. Yeah, I don't even, I don't think I'll even make it around the outside here. Oh, there we go. So before getting the next thread though, I'll tuck in, tuck in these little dudes that are hanging out here. The little ends. We're getting there. Oh, the stitching? Oh, here, like, like so. I just didn't want to get the, the quail off the camera either. Oh gosh, we almost have it here, but I don't think we do. I'm gonna get, uh, well, yeah, because we have one stitch there. Oh, I could probably, ooh, I might be able to do two stitches here. Let's let's just see. So if I do like, let's just go here. If this is a stitch, ah, okay, so we got this bottom part, because um, this will take care of that last stitch there. Cool, so. Uh, we didn't have enough thread to do the the inside, but um, the inside circle. But we had enough for the outside, so that's cool. not affecting that. All right. Boop. Throw this here. And all right, now let's get these little extra dudes. All right, so getting that last stitch. There we are, and weaving in the end. Oh, he's way uneven. Let's unwrap this and snip these off. There we go. Get this last stitch. I don't think we'll quite finish. I'm just looking at the time. I'm not sure we'll quite finish these letters, but we'll we'll get them pretty far, and then we can finish up. Finish up tomorrow. And still get to draw a little quail. Little quail feller. Little baby. All right, that other piece of green is hanging out in here. Still a super long piece, but that's fine. When we need it again, it'll be long. And I think I'll just let that little piece hang out again. That seems easiest right now. There we go. Right there. Make your way around. I'm excited to do the granny square kit. I think that'll be fun. Great fun colors. And I just have the, the label left to do on the granny square quilt. I think I even washed it. I think I might have, yeah, I think I might have even washed it. So um, 
I just have to so like make a little label. So I have a little bit of an idea for that. And uh, um yeah. Maybe we do that this month yet too. Oh, that'd be a cute idea. Amy says maybe one of the letters coming up, like in, in one of the upcoming um animal letters, uh, we can fill with leaves and flowers like in the scissors design. Oh yeah, like the scissors in on that on that mug too. Uh or or like our, our scissors embroidery pattern. Yeah, that would be that'd be a really cute idea. Just like full on fill it in with with um flowers and little speckles and dots and stuff. I like that idea a lot. That'd be fun to sketch in um one of these. For sure. Even the next one with the raccoon, that'd be kind of cute. Raccoon with a bunch of flowers. Maybe we put a little flower um, by his ear or something. I'm assuming he has an ear. Yeah, <laughs> maybe we could put a little flower flower on him like here or something, and then we could do like flowers for the letters. I like that idea. I think that'd be fun. That'd be cute. Little itty bitty flowers. Maybe we even just trace the letters instead of ironing them on. Um, because maybe we only do flowers and we don't do an outline. So we could do that, like we could cut it off of the iron-on transfer and then just trace it with a water-soluble marker. That might be an interesting thing to try. All right, there we go. All right, let's grab some of this green. I think I'll just weep it in the end right away. Uh, I'm not gonna sketch this out or anything. I'm just gonna start stitching. And I think I'm gonna start at the that bottom line of this big, the capital Q. Oops, drop the needle. We may still end up having to get more of this floss, but I'm glad I'm using it. Crap's first. Okay, so I want to get, come on, yeah, the lower edge. I want to just do some seed stitches. I'm going to go vertical um, to where I'm stitching just so I feel like I'll stay in line a little bit more. I'm going to just do seed stitches up this little Q bit so I don't need it completely filled in. Like, I'm okay with them being a little far apart like that. I think we'll get the effect. I'm just kind of giving it a try. Oh, this will even look grassy because it's these little, little short lines, even though they won't be like straight up, uh, most of them, but I think we're gonna get a cute effect doing this. All right, and now I'm gonna go just around in a circle here and I'm going to just kind of keep all my stitches the direction of the line. We have a lower one here. And I want them to kind of feel kind of random. I don't know how well I'll do at that, but we'll see. Looking kind of cute. Okay, so he's asking how the sister lawn baby doing. Um, as far as I know, they are well. I think they're on the search for a certain formula. I'm gonna have to ask them about that. But my mom mentioned something about about that that 
it w ended up being hard for them to find in their area, so mom and dad are looking for it too. Um, but yeah. He's a very cute little baby. I don't quite know when we'll visit yet, though, but I'll do that here soon. Oh, oh, you guys oh, just can't see because, all right, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Let's see if that helps, though. Bear with me. Ooh, this might be as close as I can get. All right, um, let me just, uh, I'll just come up to you guys. So uh, what I'm doing, oh, no, it's shaking a little bit. So it is kind of a light. Sorry for the shake. It's going to just take a little a little bit. Uh, but I am just doing like little seed stitches. There you guys can see. Little seed stitches around in in the queue. And we'll I'll take a uh I'll take a good photo of this when when I'm done here too. Um so like on the blog post about it. Uh you'll be able to see a little better. I think it's just cuz the this particular green is is pretty light. It's pretty close to um the background color here. Oh, Grace says Lincoln is a week old today. Has it been a week already? Oh my gosh. Week old baby. This is a tight turn here. I need to make some smaller lines, I think. Oh, what is this? Uh, Arlene's asking, what is a seed stitch? It's basically just uh, like his belly here, where it's just a bunch of little straight lines. Uh, I think traditionally it's used as padding under a satin stitch, and that's what we did for our satin stitch here. And up top here, we put a bunch of little extra seed stitches um, to just give a little lift to the, the satin stitch. But yeah, just a bunch of little straight stitches. I like using it for fur or yeah, like here it's just like, you know, a little extra texture on his belly and I think it's just given giving this cue a little extra little extra texture. And yeah, I know it's it's a bit hard to see on on the cue, but it's it's coming together. A little extra texture. Why not? And it goes with this design still, because you know we had all the seed stitches there, and we talked about the seed stitch underneath the satin stitch and did that, so it's playing playing the same game here. I think I might have enough floss for this letter, but I don't think we'll make it through the small queue. Actually, maybe we'll save the small queue you for tomorrow and we'll just finish up this guy tonight or we'll see see where I floss is at after this cue it looks like kind of a little hairy cue All right, I'm going to uh, weave in my end, and uh, I think we'll we'll get this started on the small letter Q. go. I'm going to just weave in the end here. I think um, ooh, I'm close to the edge. I don't think we'll have enough to get very far on um, 
small cube, but we'll get a start. I do have that other little itty bitty extra scrap, but I don't think that's gonna get us all that far. We'll just get like all these vertical, this vertical line first. And uh, yeah. Maybe, maybe we'll win thread check chicken, but I suspect I'm gonna have to get a little bit more. Although now I'm seeing, oh no, that's the lime color. I was like, oh, is there more in my little poof? Or my little cloud of floss, but there's, I think we, we snagged it all. Little hairy bean. <laughs> I think we actually might get pretty far with this green, and maybe we can just finish it up with that other, other little uh, teeny bit. And now we'll go around. So I think I'm going to kind of rotate as I go. It feels a little bit easier to me. Maybe not. Let's try it. This next little bit is kind of like straight down. Go through a knot or something. I think we might make it. <laughs> Maybe not with this thread, but like with the addition of this little piece, I think I think we got it. Okay, I'm excited. That means we won't have to get a new new little bit of floss. We managed to go without taking any floss off of the bobbin for for this green. Uh, theoretically, if we can finish it here, um, we just used all from the scrap pile. So. Dang, I might finish it with this thread. Might not need that other little scrap yet. Try and force it with this little bit. Because we only need like maybe one or two more stitches. I think I'll do one more and uh, yeah, we got it with just this thread. <laughs> Didn't even need our little backup scrap. That can go back in the scrap pile. All right, let's weave in this end. I'll show you guys up close again. And I'm happy about that. Oops, Clipper, I'm going to pull it out of the needle. Ah, oh, don't go. There. Come back. Okay. Got it. All right, let's snip that. Put in my little bin. All right, so I'm just gonna show, show you guys a quick close up. So there we go, little um, little bit of green hanging out in there. He's looking cute. There you guys can see a little bit of that green little uh, seed stitch around in there. I think that's a cute little texture. I like it. So technically, we could be done right now, and it's only been uh, this is only day three, so that's pretty good for um, one of these, just fill, um, doing it in doing it in three days. The quail's a pretty easy one for that. Although there's a lot of satin stitch, that does take some time, all that satin stitch. Uh, but yeah, but we are not done yet. I think tomorrow we're still gonna go, I think we'll just make one little, um, one little baby, one little baby um, behind him 
here. So we'll have to, on a separate piece of paper tomorrow, we'll sketch out like a little quail. Um, and then once we have like it how we want, I'll trace it onto here with like a water or probably just my pencil. And then we'll stitch him as well. So between um, tomorrow and the next day, we'll, uh, Friday, we'll, we'll stitch, stitch him up to a little baby. I can just see it. That'll be fun. Oh, thanks, Nate. Nate says cute. Um, yeah, I think this just added the green. It was a nice little touch at the bottom too, I think. Uh, just a little brightness, I think. And it looks like he's just like walking on the ground. So yeah, I'm excited for a little, little bird. It'll be like right here, his little, his little baby friend. <laughs> so awesome. All right, you guys. So, uh, thanks again, everyone, for stitching with me. So that is it uh, for now, for tonight. Um, again, we have our, our $20 special. So if you order $20 or more at penguinandfish.com, I will throw in a free mystery gift for you. Um, that I'll let that go for another uh, 15 minutes or so. And uh, thanks again, everyone. I'll be back here at 8.30 p.m. Central Time tomorrow. Uh, we will draw a little quail, a little quail baby. <laughs> That'll be fun. So awesome. Thanks again for hanging out with me for this past hour. I will see you tomorrow. Good night.